Welcome to a kind of yin practice. We're not going to stay in poses that long today. And um, we're going to use some um, tennis balls to do a little massage of the body. So if you have something like maybe tennis balls or massage balls, uh, we have beach tennis balls on Aruba. They are not that hard and they can be very nice too. Um, but first, let's settle for a moment. So when you are ready, close your eyes and let your hands rest in your lap or on your thighs. And take a deep in-breath and reaching the crown of the head a little more up. And then relax your chin to your chest to stretch the muscles in the neck. And then slowly roll the right shoulder to the right ear to feel that stretch on the left side of the neck. And feel the breath. It's like you're breathing through the left side of the neck to soften it. And now we're going to turn the head back, but let the inhalation carry that movement. So wait for the inhalation. And when it is there, on the inhalation, you slowly roll the head back until the left ear is close to the left shoulder. And then we're going to pause again for a moment. You feel that nice stretch on the, the right side of the neck and the shoulders. Maybe you feel that stretch going a little bit behind the ear. And then slowly roll your chin back to the chest. And as soon as you feel that in-breath, you lift up the crown of the head. And in that same movement, drop the head carefully back. Keep breathing through the throat. Make sure there's no uncomfortable feeling in the neck. And on that same inhalation, we're going to bring the neck back to neutral. And plant your hands in front of you. Let's go to a tabletop position. And spread the knees to the sides of the mat, the big toes together. And sway that left arm underneath the right arm so the left shoulder is going to touch your mat. And you can keep the hips up in the air or maybe you want to sink them down towards the heels. The target area is the back of the left shoulder, so you want to feel the stretch there, and the rest is all a bonus. Let's take a couple of breaths here. And then let's do the other side. Press through the right hand, push your chest away from the floor, relaxing the left arm, and then swing the right arm underneath the left for that stretch on the back of the right shoulder. Relax your face. Really feel the bone is being pulled out of the shoulder joint. Feel the tissues wrapped around that shoulder joint and your arm. And press that left hand back into the mat, pushing yourself away from the mat. Coming back to tabletop. Let's do something for the wrists. Let's turn the fingertips to the sides. Or if it is available for you, maybe even the fingertips can point towards the knees. Notice how this feel for your wrist. If it is too much, maybe you want to shift your weight a little more forwards. And if you want a little bit more, you can shift your weight more back. Some people even like to step back into a plank position. But only if that is possible. Keep pressing through the fingers. When the knees are up in the air, then release the knees back down. Lift up that right hand and shake it loose for a moment. And let's do the same with the left. And also do a counter pose by putting the top of the hand on the mat, stretching the, the back of the wrist now. Careful with this movement.
And let's do the other side as well. And release. Tuck under the toes and grab your, your tennis balls. It's nice toe squats. A lot of the meridians in our bodies run through the toes. And we're also going to do a little massage for the hamstrings and the calf muscles. So press that ball into the, into the knee pits, if that's what you call them. And then lower your sitting bones down. If that's okay, maybe you keep your sitting bones up in the air. It can be really sensitive to shift weight down now. Notice how it feels. And are you still breathing? If the toe squat is too much, then release the toes. It can be very intense. Then you just put the top of the feet back on the mat. And let's move those tennis balls a little more to the center of the lower legs, the upper legs. And again, gently shift your weight back. Maybe a little and maybe a lot. And again, if the toe squat is enough, then you relax your toes. And keep your focus on the balls and the sensations of the tissues underneath the balls and above them. And one more time, let's move them a little further away, close to the Achilles, and lower yourself back down. Let's all untuck the toes. If you are still in this toe squat, then do a counter pose by releasing the tops of the feet on the mats. And release, lift your sitting bones up, removing the balls from underneath them. Now walk a little more to the front edge of the mat. And step that left foot forward, keeping the right knee bent for a half, kind of half saddle pose. Maybe you can sit your sitting bones on the mat, if that's okay with your knee. And now walk your hands back. You can keep that left leg bent. So we find that stretch on the top of the, the left leg. If you can release the elbows down on the floor, that, that's fine. But it's not necessary. For people who have really long, flexible quads, they can maybe roll the shoulder blades down on the mats. If the right knee moves up away from the floor, that's totally fine. It's mean, that means that you are really relaxing those muscles. You're not trying to push the knee down. And if the shoulders are on the mat, maybe it feels nice to relax your arms to the side or overhead, taking a moment there. And breathing in. And out. And slowly bring your arms back to your torso. Start to engage the abdomen and the in-breath is going to help you come back up out of this pose and changing to the other side. Extending the right leg and bending the left behind you. Feel if that's okay with the knee. Take it easy. First, leaning on the hands so you can carefully feel the muscles, the quads elongate here. If available, you can rest on the elbows. Or if you can take it further, and again, it's definitely not necessary. If you are feeling it, you are doing it. But if you are able to relax your 
shoulders on the mat feel free and then you can choose again to do whatever you want with your arms. And release the top of the, the left leg. We hardly stretch the quads in this way. It can be very nice. And the hip flexor, the top of the, the left hip. And a deep in breath again. As you exhale, sway your arms back to the sides, pressing the elbows in the mat and the inhalation and the abdomen are going to press yourself up. Carefully stretch out the left leg and shake your legs for a moment. We're going to use the balls again and come all the way to the front of the mat with the sitting bones because we're going to use that as we are going to go all the way to the back of the mat. So grab the tennis balls, roll yourself down, and then put your tennis balls just underneath the top of the shoulders. We are massaging the long muscles uh, alongside the, the spine. And you cannot do it wrong. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but imagine and try to put them alongside the spine, starting at the top of it. And notice how this, this feels. It can be very sensitive. But try to stay where you are. And it takes about a minute for those spots to really release. And if you're not feeling that much, you can put your arms more to the sides or maybe a little more overhead. That's an option too, to intensify those trigger points. And we're going to shift our weight a little bit more to the back of the mat in a way that those tennis balls are going to move a little more down. So they are coming more approximately in the middle of the shoulder blades. It, it, it doesn't come that exact. It's better to feel what is needed for you than that you really listen to my instructions. So if you feel they need to come a little more up or a little, little more down, then just do that. Just find those sensitive tissues that really need this massage. And notice how your breathing is helping with this massage. The movement in the body. The ribs expanding and releasing. How the collarbones broadens and the shoulders are more and more relaxing. And when you do this at home, you can stay as long as you feel in this position. But for now, we're going to move a little more to the back of the mat again. So press to the soles of the feet and move the body a little more to the back of the mat. And the balls just stay in place and are going to move a little more down. At the pointy shape of the shoulder blades, that's where they are right now. And every spot may feel totally different. Maybe at some part you do not feel that much and the other ones are super sensitive. And also those sensitive parts, well, maybe especially those sensitive parts. Feel if you can soften that with your breath as well, breathing into those areas. 
And on the exhale, release and surrender and trust that the tennis balls are doing their work. And then one more time, we're going to slide a little further to the back of the mats. And it's very important that you are always triggering uh, parts of the back that are still protected by bones. So you want to stay where the ribs are. We're not going to massage the part in between the, the lower ribs and the hips. That's a area we want to avoid. So make sure you're still there. Some people always want to feel where are my ribs, where are the lower ones. And then you know for sure that you are not triggering your kidneys too much. And release in here. Okay, I think we are at that part that we want to avoid. So with your hands, grab the tennis balls from underneath you. And then lift up the, the hips and we're going to put the tennis balls at the attachment of the SI joint. So lower your hips back down. We have this triangle bone in between the hip bones. And at those attachments... We're going to place the balls and release. It can be very nice. You can just stay here and sink into those tennis balls. But if you feel you like lifting up your feet, then you can do that. Shifting a little more weight into that area. But if it is too much, just put your feet back on the mat. And what also can be very nice, the tissues here can be super dry, can create a lot of tension in the lower back. So you can also sway a little bit from side to side. And to make it even more intense, you can stretch out the legs. Maybe pulling in, just feel what naturally comes to you. So if you feel like pulling in the legs a little bit more or maybe pushing them a little further away, just intuitively feel what is needed here. Maybe even turning one hip a little more in and the other out, like a small twist with your hips. And then if your feet are not on the mat, then put your feet back on the mat. Just a tiny bit lifting up the hips to remove both balls from underneath you. And then roll the lower back and the sacrum down on the mat. And take a moment because it can be so nice to feel this. But it is more open and soft. Increasing the mobility of the pelvis. Okay, we're going to do the buttocks now, the glutes. So grab the, with the left hand, grab the tennis ball and just lift up the left buttocks from the mat and then release it down as you have put the ball underneath the left buttocks. And there's always there a point here that is really sensitive. So find it, maybe shifting a little bit to the right or to the left. And when you are there, when you have that point that is most sensitive, then you release that left knee to the sides. If that is too much, if you cannot handle this, then lift up the knee back on the lift up the knee back in the air. And the feet stay on the floor. And also here it can be nice. Some people just want to stay, but for some people it is more helpful to make tiny movements here too then they can relax that area better.
And when you do this without this video, I recommend for you to stay in it at least a minute. And then as long as needed. Until the sensitivity dissolves. And then you can release the trigger point massage. So let's do the other side. When the knee is down, you carefully lift it back up, releasing the tennis ball from underneath the buttocks. And maybe it's also nice here to feel the, for a moment the difference between the left and the, the right side. And then when you are ready, we're going to lift up the right buttocks and put the tennis ball there underneath it. And relax that right hip down. And really look for that point that is sensitive. Most of the time it's the attachment of the, the glutes. So if, that, if you have found that spot, then release the right knee to the side, if that is possible. If it is too much, you just lift it back up in the air. And stay here. And again, some people like to make those tiny movements. So the buttocks is relaxing more. But if you just want to stay still, that's okay too, of course. Lift up that knee when it's down, removing the tennis ball from underneath the buttocks. Then pulling your knees across your ankles, rock yourself up to seated. And from the seated position, come up to standing position with the balls in front of you. And shift your weight to one foot, it doesn't matter which one. Stepping the other on the ball and now giving your foot a nice massage. And there are no rules here. You can just roll over it. Maybe a little more under the toes, maybe a little more on the balls of the feet. And if you think this is not really doing that much, then let's stop and step the feet together and close your eyes. Notice if you feel any difference between the left and the, the right foot. This is also a very nice exercise to ground yourself more. Now let's massage the other foot. When you are very much in your head, thinking a lot, worrying a lot, this simple movement is going to help you to bring the energy a little more into the feet, creating more space in the mind. Now release that, step the feet together, and take a moment to close your eyes. And feel how strong you're standing here. And from this position, we go to a squat. So turn the toes a little more to the side, the feet a little wider than hip distance apart. And lower the sitting bones down, come into your squats. The elbows on the inside of the knees, plant the hands in front of you. Some people can drop the heels on the mat, but it's not possible for everybody. So maybe you need to stay on the toes, the balls of the feet. Lengthen the spine on the in-breath. And as you exhale, release the sitting bones down on the mats. And roll yourself down for a mini shavasana on your back.
Feel the heels touching the mats. Relax the feet. Feel the lower legs and where they are connected to the floor. The upper legs where they are touching the mats. Release. Feel the sitting bones, the hips, and surrender. Then notice where the back is touching the mat and where it isn't. I feel the shoulders heavy and soft. Feel where the floor is carrying your arms and the feel of your hands on the floor or the mats. Feel the back of the neck, the back of your head. Go back to the toes, from the toes to the tops of the feet, allowing your awareness to rise up the shins and the knees, the thighs, and the belly, feel the belly so soft. Feel the ribs. The chest. The throat. Your face. And your breath. You can keep your eyes closed, but bend your legs, walk your feet to the sides of the mat, breathing into the lower belly, into the lower back, and on the exhale, in slow motion, drop your knees to the right. And on the in-breath, lift them back up. And on the out breath, move them to the other sides, to the left. In, back up. And now give yourself a full body stretch. Stretch out your legs, your arms overhead. Take a deep in breath, engaging every muscle in your body. And on the exhale, release. Pulling your knees. Sway a little from side to side. And turn on the right side of the body. Stay for a moment here. Feel how your body is totally relaxed. Your breath is calm. Your mind is at ease. And slowly press yourself back up to seated. On the inhalation, circle your arms up to the sides until the palms touch. As you exhale, touch your forehead, your heart, your belly. Namaste.
Thank you for joining.